Hey there, and welcome back to our Elden Ring lore playthrough. Now again, if you're not super familiar with what we're doing, we're just taking our time playing through the game, taking a look at all the things, reading descriptions, just kind of going slow a little bit and smelling the roses. Uh, now, as I do it, I'm not just like reading things and saying like, this is what the answer is, that's what they're talking about, etc, etc. It's more about like exploring the story and experiencing it, like we're going through it for the first time and seeing how the story unfolds as we like move through the game like see like what they're like what kind of story is miyazaki telling us when you don't know what the story is like wh what kind of conclusions do we find when you don't know all the conclusions already right because that's kind of interesting and fun to me but we've oh now i can't pull up my map but we cleared out a section of that right road we're going to move up to the section right above it as well these are a bunch of land squirts and right here is a land squirt ashes which these things are one of those strangest enemies in the game now look how their bottoms are like they look like roots but they're all fleshy and weird gross and they're spewing out poison and if you watch them they breathe in with one of their little nasty orifices and then they spew out poison with the other one now the interesting thing about them is that they are very susceptible to poison so if you actually poison them they will like go critical and then explode and you can use that to chain react and wipe out all of the other ones but see it doesn't if they do their normal poison stuff it doesn't affect them right like they're obviously spewing out poison all the time anyways but it's not actively affecting themselves or their like allies i guess the other land squirts so it's a little interesting that when you like make them explode that's when it works you know i mean it's a gameplay mechanic i don't think there's anything significant about it per se i will say though you can get strips of white flesh from them which is uh meat from a bloodless creature which is kind of interesting there's a number of creatures that fall into that category uh like the uh squid things land octopus deals and then here's the ash Blah, blah, blah. summon three land squirts but this one costs hp instead of fp and the spirits appear some distance from the summoner the firm fleshy tubes of the creatures remain rooted to this spot spraying poisonous liquid over their surroundings it's kind of fun i use that one and the miranda flower ashes for my lord yupa build or like kind of cosplay themed character and uh it's very fun it's kind of like using the toxic jungle all right so running this way we have two ways we can go there's away to that tower which will be very interesting but we're not going to do that one for now we're going to go north so that's where i'm interested and we see uh some people with burning branches i mean it looks like a staff of sorts they've got look how they have thorns we've seen people with thorns before and it was at uh stormvale castle the different exile soldiers were covered in thorns and it was like a sign of some curse i mean they've got it over there head red robe looking things now there's another thing kind of i mean that is very i would like to call biblical right like a crown of thorns and uh we have that shield where it's talking about a blind maiden was crushed by the briars of sin and i mean looking at them it looks like that kind of like covers sort of their eyes right I mean they're doing but they got fire stuff too so they're not just like i don't know huh i mean they're just swinging that like clubs right I'm trying to get some more looks at them it's getting dark though it's a rain hmm but we can take a look at the body we'll turn on our lantern a little bit okay I mean, definitely looking zombie-like. They don't have any shoes. Like, they're overall just kind of ragged looking, right? Eyes look all withered. They don't... Yeah, they're just very zombie-like. Ragged clothes, but it's interesting. It's the first time we've seen anybody like that. And then there's a few more there, but they're accompanied by somebody else. And when we get in there, let's get rid of them. He's a lot different, right? He's actually got, like, nice clothes on. Armor. Uh, you know, he's actually dressed well and, like, equipped. Big old mace. He's doing more fire things, but fire spells. It's not like he's just got a fire club type of thing going on. 
Uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's a chainmail helmet. And on the front of his armor, it's a face. So now we'll get rid of him. There we are. Yeah, you can kind of see there. Look, it's got, it's like a Cyclops. Oh yeah. No guy's face, he's got red hair too. We know somebody else has red hair and that would be freaking Radigan. Now my controller, it like, oh God, I need, I'm pushing up. Nothing's happening. I can't show you. Look, look there. Now it goes. This is, oh Lord. All right, so some fire faction. What are they doing here? Who knows? But we got ourselves there a guardian golem. And if we, you know, if you remember, this building is a lot like the Sifra River Well. Only this one has a big old guardian golem. And an interesting thing about this guardian golem being here, what does this dude have going on with him? Fire. And what was that other dude we just fought dealing with? What were they doing? Fire. Is there a connection there? Is that part of why there was some weird patrol of whoever those were here? Or are they here for something else? He dropped us an item. The Golem's Halberd. That's pretty cool. I like that. A great halberd of black stone crafted by civilization now gone to ruin. Wielded by Guardian Golem. So maybe that has to do with that civilization we found way underground, right? Also, that door looked like it was closed earlier, and I wish I'd gotten a look at it before defeating him. Huh. Uh, so I wonder, right, is that why he's guarding this? Is because his civilization is way underground? And how did all these golems remain up here when, you know, their whole civilization sank beneath the earth? Which leads me to another point, right? Lyurnia is sinking, like the academy and stuff is sinking into the ground and the academy is staying upright pretty well but all the gate front and all the stuff is like descending and we know that underground there are these ancient civilizations whether it's like you know the eternal city somewhere down and in here like we see kind of sections of it and some other older civilization so like is that the fate of Rey Lucaria now to descend down and now we've got one of those portal things opening with a graven uh seed or graven school and there goes doing this crazy mortar spells there's also a bear here why is this dude over here i don't know I, what is is there anything significant about what it is guarding like i don't think there is anything here so it's doing almost like ah comet spells i would say hmm and it doesn't even drop anything this is a dead end as well. There's just a bear, some items, like, you know, just some random materials. Is there anything over here? Oh, there is a chair. A dude and a field. A lot of times these guys have smithing stones. They're like nobles. Oh, a stone sword key. Well, that's kind of nice. Uh, the Einsel River well. Now, we heard of the Einsel River because of this material we found. The, like, formic rocks. Not root resin. Formic rock, yep used from or made from solidified giant ant venom very acidic used for crafting found near Einzel river and other places where giant ants live so like we found the rocks in Seifer river which is obviously not the same place but you know maybe they did kind of live around there stuff to do with the eternal city oh there's a bunch of like uh, we can see the giant ants right there awesome <laughs> just awesome and we can see that there are a bunch of like um it's like sarcophagus, stone sarcophagus, sarcophagi, wooden ones as well. And definitely like the beginnings of, you know, the river. The fire right here is uh, red, which is different from some of the other sections of the underground, right? Which actually, I didn't think about that with the Seifer River well, right? Because a lot of those torches and stuff had um you know when we go underground they typically have some of that blue flame but when we were lighting those different uh braziers and uh you know activating the hollow horn grounds they uh they weren't blue it was red it was red flame like just natural fire i would say now looking on the ground too we can see there's like 
these bodies. They're all nasty and desiccated. Just, yeah, almost like burnt looking and chewed acidic, which makes sense when you've got these freaking ants, right? Uh, we're gonna go this way first. Oh, that's a fancy jar. Oh, there's an ant. Look at that dude. He's got a giant old sting or two. Oh, he grabbed us. Oh, and then he just stabbed us, dude. Oh, look how hairy they are and nasty. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No thanks. All right, well, we're gonna have to progress through here anyway, so let's just throw some fire pots. Oh, one shot. Look at that. Hmm. Kind of wish they were getting uh, staggered by my counter hit, but I guess that's fine. Oh, look how nasty those, like, uh, I mean, the interesting thing is, too, like, we are on the river, which is kind of cool. And that's a question of, like, where is it going to take us? Like, where is the river flowing? I mean, look at all those bodies. So I have to wonder, right, did... Right, and there's a ton of these, like, sarcophagus things, and, like, tombs. Did they, right, did they, are all these bodies from, like, these tombs, or were there living people here? And look at the size of some of these skeletons. Oh, they're huge. Those are not, like, regular people-sized things. Like, there's a bunch of small bodies, but then there's all these other huge skeletons. Ooh, opening up wide. Okay, now oh, look, see, now we're getting into some of that blue-white flames again. No more ants, but we're getting around these other, like, fancy old ruins. And again, it's kind of like, it really makes me think aqueducty, uh, dam, sluice gates and stuff, right? Like, that should, see how it's, like, flowing fast down there? Too bad we don't have a map. Huh. So I would say that whatever, if this is some kind of, like, the eternal city or something that like it they built it up around these rivers and they were like channeling it for stuff ah but see right okay so right there they built these like sluice gates and dams and stuff but they had to have done it after this civilization was gone and look at this complete statue we haven't seen the complete statue before so it's a robed man bearded he's got a tablet thing and we looked at it before and it looked like it had a tree and he even has like kind of root looking things going down gripping onto there so like i mean the ur tree's been around for a long time but maybe it has something to do with the great tree like was a because that's how we know there is something else right some other tree supposedly but we haven't seen it so maybe it's gone now and like did this ancient civilization have some kind of worship or follow following of that which would make sense i mean if you got some giant tree thing you know people would like to follow it what is this one called the sluice gate yeah it's a sluice gate ul palace runes so was this civilization called ul ul palace unless it's just in the name of the palace like the palace was called ul and that's located underneath this section so Maybe there's two different, like, civilizations. The architecture is pretty much the same, but maybe that's just for use of assets, right? Uh, but one over here and then one over there. So I wonder what this one might have been called or if it was, you know, kind of the same. Oh, look at all these guys. Now, uh, I did some farming earlier, just kind of, like, offline uh, with these Clayman guys. And uh, I got their harpoon, and it's the Clayman's harpoon. And it is made out of a sharpened bit of meteorite. Now, there are some things to know about the meteorites. They are pretty significant across the board for a few reasons. One, because you've got uh, the some of the glintstone things like Comet. A comet is just... It's a meteorite is a comet that hits the earth, right? Like, unless my like definitions and memories are all crazy, right? That that's what it is. Uh, but then you've also got these other things that uh tie in with them. I gotta kind of focus a little bit on these guys. Uh, like there's a spot down in the Weeping Peninsula which, on its own, like it was kind of interesting, and I 
essentially cut it out of what I was doing because there's a lot to do in the Weeping Peninsula. But we find this section on the east part and it's called Beside the Park Mark, Park Marked like grounds or ruins. And it's like all these like craters across the ground with little bits of like glinting gold rocks in there. And then around it are all these like evil, right? They're, they're all kind of raggedy looking. They've got rocks and packs on their back. Some of them got these big like stick uh, pick looking things. And uh, it's like they're very interested in it. Let me double check the name of the place. Beside the crater pocked clay, right? And it is, it says craters. And uh, these guys, they're using what seems to be gravity magic and so we find here there's an item right here gravity stone fan shard of rock found in the wake of a meteorite strike it is imbued as particularly weighty magic the desperate ones who scavenge for these shards dub themselves star callers right and then we go into our uh here clayman's harpoon made from a sharpened meteorite shard wielded by clayman who uh, infest dynastic remains faint light deals magic damage right so these meteorite things seem to be pretty important especially because when you go back and we look at that you know the craters where it's got these little bits of meteorite things there are these little golden rocks and which is a little different from these because a lot of these like purpley gravity things are purpley right like we have the gravity spells that we've gotten from those onyx and alabaster lords that are purpley and dark and then you got these gold rocks and down in the mines at the end of each of these mine sections these dungeons there is a large golden section of meteor like that's what they're trying to excavate so like they're definitely very significant there now coming in here what are we going to find look at right there it hasn't started moving yet which is pretty good for us something hanging it's curled and moving but it's got these membrane like wings and it almost looks like kind of a halo-y disc thing over there it looks like a bug like and i mean before we talked about there's not a lot of stuff that's necessarily dealing with uh, bugs right like there's some mentions of centipedes mentions of scorpions but like then in practical speak like ants have been the only big bug thing we found so far there's big dragonfly things but they're not like significant in any fashion so there's not like a lot that deals with them but now we're starting to get some and they're dealing with this stuff like underground and old oh and then he unfurls oh look at that dude too oh he's got big old mandible mandible looking things on his face it's like a, a human head looking too the skull is like split open and see how it shifts in that opening of the skull like an eye shifting around one arm he's got a bunch of the arms the halo things are like going around his body it goes up yeah it's like he's like planted into the rooftop multiple wings that thing is gnarly looking it is truly gnarly looking and then look see purple we know that's gravity and he starts hurling all these rocks Now, we could try and take him out, and I might try to do that. Take the cover, finger calling. It's like these dudes were, like, traveling up there, and then um, I would assume they got wiped out by that, because that's what it looks like to me. Like, they're traveling up, and then just got absolutely wrecked by that dude. And these guys, I would almost say, like, they're hiding behind cover. Now, are they actually hiding, or is that just, like, a, a gameplay thing? Like we are gonna show up here to hide behind cover and then what do we have to deal with a bunch of clay men and another thing that's kind of interesting too is i think you know talking about the clay men a little bit is the description of the uh the harpoon how it says a clay men who infest the old ruins not like live in there not like inhabit or anything like that like they infest it like like saying there's some kind of pest like they shouldn't be there and they're like I don't want to say causing problems, but, like, you know, that's what I would say for, like, a bug that starts, like, getting into my house or infesting the location. And so, yeah, it's, maybe they, like, 
shouldn't be there anymore. I, you know, or it's just a way to describe like how many there are there. Uh, up ahead, we see a merchant, along with like like this looks like kind of big temple-y, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's got that big old statue right at the front, and it's nice and well kept. And we got ourselves a map. What do you have, bud? Yeah, I can't imagine why it would be such a long time. So we've got the gravity stone fan, stone chunk, same thing. Uh, Lost Ashes of War. We've got some more Celestial Dew. These are nice, too. We could, we're going to want that. A perfum Perfumer's Cookbook. Uh, crafting techniques left by a depraved perfumer. Contains perilous techniques no ordinary physician would attempt. Acid spray mist. Okay. Now, here's some stuff. This is, like, uh, the clothes you would get from one of the starting, like, classes. An iron mask forced on a prisoner convicted of an appalling crime. Thick, heavy, and utterly stifling. A foul creation designed to torment the wearer, either slowly fermenting hatred within their heart, or a spiritual fervor that is near indistinguishable from it. Hmm. So let's take a look at that map. I want to see if it has anything to say. Two great rivers flow beneath the lands between the Sifra and the Ainsil. This vast region is said to be the grave of civilizations that flourished before the Urtree. Yeah, so you can assume those, you know, whether it's the Eternal City and this Wool place or something, they were both from before the Earth tree. Now we've only been, all right, we came up here, went up north, it was a dead end. So we went down along here, another dead end, uh, ended up following this up to the Sluice Gate, which took us up into here. And then we've been going and traveling through this section. Looks like there's a section of water we could have taken there. And then uh, we're here where there's a big bug thing, another path that looks like it can go along here. All right. All right, we've got ballista bolts. I wonder, is this going to be efficient at all? Probably not. Okay, yeah, we can do this. Here we go. Boom. Got rid of it. Now we can explore it in peace. Oh, look right there. It's a golden centipede. Mark of the Golden Order, or maybe... Uh, maybe those who live in death, but there hasn't been any kind of like skeleton, those who live in death type of thing. So maybe somebody from the Golden Order has been here. But then the question is like, why were they here, right? But well, we've ended up circling around back from the previous chamber, right? Where we saw that there was a little like river section here. And now we can get up and around. Now this is probably the way you're supposed to defeat that big buggy thing right because it looks like it's going to take us up where it's hanging down from and then we could have like actually like hit it with melee weapons but i didn't feel like dealing with like climbing all the way up here being under fire so i just i opted to use the the heavy big crossbow ballista <laughs> because that worked pretty well and very safe for us i guess one thing i could have done was get up here and then we would have gotten a really close up look on the thing and anyway, we got this upper section here it's open at the top, and there's just a bunch of these tablet things, bowl, beast things, a circle kind of icon type of stuff. But I don't, there's like nothing really up here aside from us being able to deal with that enemy from what I can tell. Insul River Downstream. Uh, and there's some ants. Again, just a bunch of bodies, but... It looks a lot more nest like they've got these like little cocoon egg things. And it's like a mist around the place. Like, it, right? See how it's got this like red haze to it? It's like little gleaming particles going on. Back, we're going to use our. No, we're not going to use Shield Bash at all because we couldn't get it up in time. Yeah, see what's there? Yeah, that low red mist. A bunch of these skeletons. What do we get? Smithing stones. Immunizing horn charm. All right, that's a lot like the clarifying horn charm. All right, we'll have to see what that one does for us. Uh, another thing worn by ancestral followers. Raises immunity. Governs resistance to poison and rot. Said to be a budding horn. The ancestral followers believe that the horns have long lived. Okay, so all kind of the same thing, right? This one's very blue, though, which is kind of neat. This one has much more of the green, I guess, to go with the idea of, like, the rot and stuff. Oh, there's some more formic rock right there. Makes sense. 
Oh, and look at those guys. Now, obviously, if you've played a Dark Souls game before, these guys are going to be immediately recognizable. These are basilisks. Look at they got these like almost amphibian looking tails. They've got kind of nasty looking things. They got looks like big old eyes, nasty claws. What you guys doing? Hey. Oh, they're kind of greenish looking. They're very chill though. Isn't that nice? Okay. Can we get a nice little angle? Oh, there we go. Yeah, and look at those freaky eyes. Now, look at that. That can't be good, right? This black smoke with little bits of gold into it. Uh, if we go into it, we will find that it is death blight. And we've seen what that does to us before. That is instant death, right? And, and you can see the effect being that, like, thorny protrusions and stuff that get us. I think thorny. It always kind of appears thorny to me, but it's... I guess it might not really be. It's just kind of funky, nasty looking. So, alright. Those kinds of things are here. So why are they here? Oh, that looks pretty... And this is a lot of bodies, by the way. Like, a lot. Hey, bud. Soap. Good for us. There's a lot of butterflies. Oh, look at those, like, crystal sections. Alright, that's kind of cool. Where are we at right now? Okay, so we're still at the edge of this whole section right here. Okay, but we're still, you know, under Lyurnia. Somber smithing stones. Aeonian butterflies. Alright. Dude, look at that. Like, what is this? Oh, uh, my controller drift is very dangerous for this spot. Okay. We can see more of those really old runes. Maybe they're like old. Right? Huge statues. Big opening gateway. Is that a section up top we could get to maybe? Lots of old runes. But this is like... I would say a lake, right? I mean, we're under Lyurnia of the lakes. So, Lyurnia is sinking down into this which is not good right because it doesn't look good it's red but what's the aeonian butterfly say maybe that'll give us some clues butterfly with withered scarlet wings found in the swamp of aeonia used for crafting items according to myth these butterflies were once the wings of the goddess of rot herself all right so ties that in in this place it ties it in with the scarlet rot and we know Millennia had something to do with it. Is that why there's this pink haze here? Um, and it's, I mean, it talks about the goddess of rot. Mm, swamps of Aeonia. So is that place down there a swamp, like the swamp of Aeonia? But I was under the impression that the scarlet rot was off to the east, right? Because it, I mean, you could see the different coloration there. See how is that kind of pinky red, scarlet rot. And... You know, it said, Gideon told us that General Dawn fought Millennia and the Rot to a standstill. Now, if Millennia and the Rot have a tie-in together, and she marched down along this way, that could explain why there's something going on there. Alright, as we finish following this path along right here, come up into what I think is one of the coolest looking areas in the game. Like, look at that. You can see it. There's that false night sky. More of those structures. And see, it's got, like, the sluice gate kind of things. So it's, they're, like, I would say diverting some of the water to flow here. But look at all these, like, I guess petrified bodies. They're, like, looking up. I don't know. And, like, I can't see them from here. But, like, horror or something. Or pleading. And then there's this dude sitting up in a huge throne but he's like a skeleton white hooded robes over a yellow and it's kind of rotted looking but look there's that symbol see that edged symbol right at the bottom of his like 
I don't know, robe. It's the same as like we see on that statue, like we saw in the uh, Chapel of Vows or Cathedral of Vows, whatever it's called. All right, it had it on the front part of its robes, that woman. So this ties in with that, those statues that we've seen. And the way the robe, I mean, part of it's probably because it's a skeletal face, but it reminds me of the ferryman, the mariners, right? And it's got rings all over his fingers deals like and also this just feels like a boss fight right yeah look at them they look like they're terrified huh. oh there he is I don't know that this guy can bleed. Dragonkin Soldier of Noxtella. Okay, Noxtella. So I haven't heard of Noxtella before, but we heard Nox, which is kind of like night. And so, oh, that's not great. All these bodies are messing me up. <laughs> Thanks for breaking them up, bud. Oh, I didn't know that's what he was doing. Still, same look as like that other one we fought. The big, you know, hollowed out like a whatchamacallit like abdomen you know overall the same dragonkin soldier so we know that he i tried to attain immortality but didn't but look at this different he's got blue lightning going on now we've seen them other lightning from the capital soldier but it was a yellow lightning and if we get hit by his stuff it's going to build up frostbite which is matches with that dragonkin halberd thing, right? Which does a lightning move, and then will also apply frostbite when you use its uh, ash of war. I was kind of hoping to get a, another blood loss, but oh, wow, that was a lot of damage. Now he will also kind of fly up and do some crazy things, right? Frozen lightning spear. All right, and we see, like, when we were looking at the spells that we got from the Dragon Cult things, like, Lightning Spears are a big thing. And, I mean, that's all just a callback to a lot of, like, the Dark Souls games, because that's what they use as well. But the Frozen Spear, incantation that channels the power of the Dragonkin soldiers, creates a spear of ice lightning and stabs it into the ground from above. On impact, the spear will burst into trails of lightning advancing forwards. The Dragonkin were born in the Eternal City, where they knew no true sky nor true lightning. Instead, ice lightning was their weapon. So they were born in the Eternal City, and like the regular dragons are, you know, are up in the surface where they can fly, they have the sky, and like can see the lightning in the sky. But they don't have that, they don't know it. Instead, they know ice and cold, and so that's their weapon. They have a false lightning. And I mean, like the Halberd tells us too, unless I stored it away. Looks like I stored it away. I'll have to pick it back up. Uh, you know, they never attained immortality like their, you know, their kin, the dragon. You know, like the true dragons. Better look on him? Not really. Can't look up any higher. Looks like he's got something kind of around his neck, maybe. I mean, this dude has to be a giant, right? Like, we know giants were a thing because we have um, some of the flame things they talked about, uh, the dragon or not dragons but the giants like the roar medallion and what could be in here a great ghost glove wart hmm ah so this one finally has some different uh flavor text to it so since times of old large glove warts were used to comfort heroic spirits given in tribute to those who died the most glorious of deaths in the hope their stories would become legend it's like a roots of trees but they're very silvery looking okay so this side of grace is just called the dragon soldier of noxtella so is this eternal city called noxtella like it's just called an eternal city like a general label and then the actual name is noxtella dragon halberd alas the dragonkin soldiers never attained immortality and perished as decrepit pale imitations of their skyborn kin so they were born in this false night maybe to be some kind of like you know 
to be like the regular like true ancient dragons because we know there are ancient dragons and especially since we've gotten the hearts from other dragons that have gravel stones on them saying they're like the stone scales of their true like ancient ancestors uh so you know maybe like these things were born there and maybe or maybe they were even like made because again like it says it's never attained and they were born under a false night so they never like it's like they were created to replicate something else but they could never truly truly do it they didn't have the true sky so they didn't have like the true lightning they had ice lightning they couldn't fly they couldn't you know they didn't have immortality and they just perished as decrepit pale imitations right now unfortunately there's not really anything else we can do here this is a similar trend that's happened with the other river right where there is a huge section over here we weren't able to reach there's like stuff up here that we've kind of looked at from up below and so a similar thing here we can't like we've only been able to go right along this southern edge but we can see there's a lot more structure going on here we can see there's something else up in here right like there's other places that it looks like we should be able to go to but we can't reach right now and if we spend a long time looking we'll find that there is nothing for us to do and i mean in addition to that we also saw that giant red spot like you know a swamp maybe swamp of aeonia where does this go down to i wonder further down oh wait there's there's actually a side of grace there can we oh i don't jump oh lord controller drift don't mess me up now okay okay so there's still more down that way and we can see some of those like little egg sections like from the ants i guess and i mean this is that drops us down okay right here so maybe there's a way to get down there and I mean, like we did see it over in this, you know, in the Seafer River well, where it looks like the water, I mean, it goes down and down and down, like it goes further down, which again, that's what we're seeing here. Well, that is where we are gonna call it here with the Ansel River, a very cool place. The Eternal Cities are very cool, right? Because that's where we seem to be at, or at least on the outskirts of it. Uh, I mean, it's Noxtella, sounds Eternal City-like, city, city -like, right? You got that dude, super mysterious, gotta be a giant. I mean it's giant and then that kind of tracks with these bodies some of these bodies look very large right if they are actually bodies and then you've got those skeletal remains and some of those are much larger so hmm. so thanks for checking it out hope you guys enjoyed it and uh yeah like always until the next one take care